Hey guys! So the other day we had this really big rain event here in Queensland, it's uh, Australia, and uh, we literally had weeks of rain and it was just terrible for instruments. And one of my clients brought in an A.E. Smith violin. Smith is probably the best known Australian violin makers. His instruments sell for close to a hundred thousand um, Australian dollars. Um, and uh, this is what happened to it. I'm just going to open it up and bring it over. So firstly the neck came out. But not only the neck came out, as it came out, it actually broke out part of the top block. Now I'm going to show you more how that happened when I open up the instrument. So what I'm going to do to repair this, um, and also it, it had actually been damaged for a little while, so the fingerboard rested on top of here and here, and, and basically ruined the varnish in these two places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly repair this problem by taking off the top plate, replacing the top block, refitting the neck, and uh, but also servicing the whole instrument because it hadn't been serviced for a little while. Um, so that'll, that'll involve cleaning the varnish, uh, planing the fingerboard, and I'll probably also do a bridge and sound post to really optimize the instrument. So that's going to be really exciting. It's a really beautiful instrument. Uh, like I said, it's A.E. Smith. He was an Australian maker. I'll tell you a little bit more about him while I'm doing this repair. But first of all, I'm going to have to take this into my workshop and get the top plate off. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is to carefully open this top plate. As you well know, if you've watched me open top plates before, it makes a horrendous racket. Uh, so please don't get too worried. It's a hundred thousand dollar violin and it's going to make a horrible noise, but actually it is very loosely glued and it's coming open extremely easily. Wow, that is not good. Okay, let's have a look. There we go. Now, if you happen to be the owner of this instrument and you're watching, it's all right. Your instrument wasn't harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> okay. So here's the exciting moment. There is, oh wow, it's had a few cracks. Look at that. They were actually well repaired. So it's had some cracks just here. And uh, a few, it looks like the center join may have opened. It's had a soundpost crack. Interesting. Yes, yes, okay, I can see that. Oh, this, this crack went all the way through the sound post, so at some point the instrument must have had some damage. I wonder what happened. There's a bit of a scratch here, maybe that caused it. I'll be checking every aspect of the instrument to make sure there are no, um, no other cracks. Now, uh, this is the top block here, and as you can see, the top block is actually broken just there. Now I'm in, I'm actually in two minds whether to just repair the top block and then fit the neck or um, whether to fit a new top block. I'm going to see how well this fits together. I'd prefer to keep the original top block because it does have his, uh, his name uh, stamped inside it and uh, you know, also it's got 
<laughs> yes, look, he's, he's copied the Stradivarius sign. He's also stamped his name in here, stamped his name there, stamped his name into the top plate just to make absolutely sure that everyone knows it was his work. It was actually quite neat. Like it looks, um, the, the workmanship he did actually looks fairly neat. He, he set the lining in, in quite a long way. Um, and the lining is quite thick, so from here to here, it's actually very thick. Usually, it's about two-thirds of that. So, um, right now, so his lining is about, um, you know, eight mils. And usually, a li lining is a lot less. It's closer to six mils or so. Um, anyway, neatly, you know, neatly made. I'm, I'm quite happy with... Uh, with the way that was made. He was a very good violin maker. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of clean up a little bit in here. There's been a bit of a um, bit of dirt build up. There was even a little cockroach nest just here. Um, or oh, what's that? No, that's maybe that's just glue. But I'll just clean that area up a little bit just to, uh, you know, it's not that often that these instruments get opened. I think he may have treated the uh, the plates with some oil, which make them uh, which make them open up a little bit easier. It's sort of a very very um, sort of an orangey tinge to the inside and the outside of the plates. Um, when I say plates, I mean like the top plate and the back plate. So just generally, the inside has that um, orangey tinge. Now I'm going to try and uh, just fix the top block rather than replace it because I truly think that would be better. It just keeps more of the authentic part of the instrument intact. So I'm going to just soak this glue a little bit just around uh, around here as well. There's a bit of uh, just a bit of glue build up. So over the years, uh, people must have glued this area a lot and, and it left some build up. So I'm gonna clean that off. And uh, now I'm gonna move, I'm gonna put the top plate back into the case and the saddle, this is known as the saddle. And then uh, I'll work on that later. One thing I will do, is before I glue the neck back in, I am actually going to clean this whole area. It looks like he actually, it looks like he actually purposely made this area a little bit darker. Um, um, yeah, so just to make it look older and antique, this was definitely purposely antiqued, this violin, uh, with some wearing areas here and there. And then I'm very carefully going to check over the entire top plate to make sure there's no other cracks. All right, we're just gonna wait for a moment for this uh, this glue to loosen up. Okay, so that's soaked for a little while now. So I'm just going to uh, get some hot water and give this area a bit of a clean. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a bit of a clean. Almost looks like someone used the wrong glue here. Hopefully they didn't. Okay, I got that cleaned, uh, so that's looking pretty good. It's drying, but I can actually glue. I can actually glue this area together already. I've got some really nice, fairly fresh glue, 
And uh, so the first thing I have to do, I have to find a clamping block that fits, or I might have to fit a clamping block to this because that has to fit exactly to get a really nice tight um, fit. Let's let's have a look at what well, actually. Believe it or not, this this clamping block I got here is actually really good. So. I'll be able to use that and I'm literally just going to glue this little area right here um, right here and nothing else I'm not even going to glue the the back plate on I'm just going to glue that and just focus on this for now and then I'll do the back plate afterwards um, you know in the next uh, probably tomorrow morning I'll leave this dry overnight because it has to fit a hundred percent that's really important okay here we go this is uh, so I'm going to put glue on both sides. Okay. I want to make sure that this is, uh, this whole area is right down at the right level so I'm actually going to clamp this clamp the sides down as well there we go and now I'm just going to press this together make sure this fits a hundred percent there we go I can't clamp this too hard because it can cause a breakage here we go That's actually looking beautiful, so that will um, that'll like glue firm now. Uh, I basically, I'm just going to leave it overnight till tomorrow morning, and then uh, tomorrow morning I'll take the clamp off and I'll glue the next uh, the next part of it. Good morning. Gotta have my sip of coffee first. I actually already turned on the glue um, so I can take the clamp off here and uh, I'm gonna do the second step in this gluing process which is um, just gluing the join that's come together really nicely so I'm just going to glue this join here now, the rest of it. I just didn't want to do it yesterday. I just wanted to focus on the crack in the top block. I chose to keep the top block because it does have the A.E. Smith stamp on it. Um, you know, I'm trying to keep as much of the original as possible. And the glue is very strong and there's quite a bit of gluing surface up here. So I think it was a better choice to uh, just glue it back together. Um, I think the reason it f did fall apart was because of the extreme humidity we had. You can see I'm dressed a bit warmer today. It's actually, um, well, for Queensland, it's very cold. Uh, so we got like a southerly um, uh, and Arctic... Uh, Arctic sort of a wind coming up from the south through the middle of Australia and we had frost in some areas but here in Brisbane where we're a bit closer to the ocean I think it was about six degrees so 
for us, it's really cold. Anyway, so I've been heating my workshop too. It's nice and warm for gluing. Um, also, the great thing, uh, by the time it's the middle of the day, it'll be around 20, to, uh, 20 degrees, which is pretty much like summer temperatures in Europe, um, in Northern Europe. All right, so I'm going to, oh, this stuck down a little bit. So I'm just going to put some glue in here and put the clamp on and then literally let this dry. And that's all I have to do. And the next step after that will be gluing the top plate back on. But before I do that, I will tell you a little bit more about the ins inside of this violin because um, it's not often that you would see a Smith violin open and so I'm just going to comment on the workmanship on how he did things um, because that could be of interest to other makers and you know and you um, he, he was a very neat worker so I'll talk a little bit more about Smith but for now, let's get this clamp on. And uh, there we go. Nice and easy. I made these clamps many years ago, over 30 years ago, in fact. Uh, I made them in 1986. Just wiping all the, uh, washing all the glue off. Uh, the the less dried glue there is, the better, because if there's dried glue on the varnish, and and it accidentally sort of peels off, it can peel off, take off the varnish with it. And as you know, the varnish of an instrument is kind of sacred. All right, I'm going to put this away to dry, and. Uh, and I'll get back to it this afternoon and I'll tell you a bit more about the inside of this instrument and I'll also tell you a little bit more of the story of A.E. Smith. It's a fair bit later and, uh, and this would have dried by now so I'm going to take the clamps off. Um, so let's have a little look inside the violin and uh, look at the workmanship. It was all very neatly made. The corner blocks are very neat. The lining is super, super neat. So he put a stamp up here. He also put a stamp here. And then of course there's the label here. But also on the inside of the top plate, he's got the stamp here, as well as a stamp on the base bar there. Uh, so this was this violin was made in 1934 and it was right in the middle of the Great Depression in Australia. Unemployment was close to 30%. It really was a difficult time in Australia. So this particular violin was made in uh, 1934. It was made around the time of his 80th violins. He made very few violins that year. Most years he made about seven violins, but that year he hardly made any. It was right in the middle of the Great Depression. And uh, it was a very, very tough decade. Um, unemployment at, in 1932, just two years prior, had hit 30. Uh, over 30 percent in Sydney so really high un unemployment so it must have been a very difficult time uh, that the instrument was made and so it may not have been sold um, straight away okay so now the time has come to glue up the violin the glue is hot and ready to go um, and uh, we've got uh, you know we've got the clamps We've got the, uh, yeah, we've got all the four clamps, so let's get into it. So I have to move, move very fast now because the glue turns to jelly 
rather quickly. Okay, now take the top plate, make sure place it exactly the way it had been before. You can very clearly see it by the line, um, the line in the varnish where the top plate needs to go. Just wiping a bit of the glue off so that it doesn't affect the varnish. Alright, let's go the other side. Just got to make sure it all matches up. Alright, I'm just going to tighten all the clamps. Not too tight because I don't want to cause any damage. Alrighty, now <clears throat> clamps on the top and bottom. Okay. I put those last two clamps on fairly light so that they don't definitely don't leave any imprints but enough to glue the top block down all right so this is now basically it just needs to dry i'm just going to clean up a little bit of the glue you don't have to watch me do all of it and uh, i will keep working on this violin uh when everything's dried and so the next step after that will be refitting the neck which is exciting oh actually i'll, I'll clean underneath the neck first <laughs> It's time to take the clamps off the violin and then I'm going to take a look and see how um, how the neck fits and things like that. Also, I've got to clean this area uh, underneath the fingerboard. Wow, the varnish. The varnish literally peeled off down to the wood. That's interesting. It's going to tell me a bit about the um, Smith varnish. That's, that's interesting. I thought it would have had more adhesion than that. An important thing like I know that uh, the old Italian varnish is really connected with the wood they, they there was a very strong adhesion so. I mean who works on their birthday honestly only people who love their work which means I'm not really working I'm just having fun Okay, so that's come together beautifully. 
very happy with that. Now, um, now I've got to figure out what's going on here. Like, why did the... So it's like a softest varnish, but it's literally a varnish has come right off and it's down to the wood. It's quite incredible because, I mean, the varnish is quite sacred on an instrument. But uh, for it to be stripped right back. So it's quite amazing. I mean, this, this violin was actually made in the 1930s. So it really was a time when... Uh, um, the economy did terrible like it, it took 10 years to get out of the Great Depression uh, and the reason behind it was because people had borrowed borrowed from so people had borrowed from the future in the 1920s hmm, let me think what other time does that remind me of huge spending low interest rates overpriced everything hmm yes you guessed it let's hope that we don't have a, a period like the Great Depression thanks to bad policy and greedy people so I'm using a very fine sandpaper just to Sand back the area under the um, under the fingerboard. Um, there's a huge, like dirt, real dirt build up here as well. So you're gonna have to clean that off. <laughs> that's that's like the darkened look is kind of faked under there. I'll I'll just have to leave it like that. Um, so Arthur, Arthur E. Smith um, did a lot of antiquing on his instruments, uh, which means you make a new instrument to look old. It's something I do um, with some of my instruments as well. The, um, the Hofmeister, um, Georg Hofmeister violins that I sell that are about $4,000. Um, a really good example of an antiqued instrument and uh, yeah and some of my other instruments are antiqued as well it's just um, sometimes people just like the look of older instruments and and so you know why wait a hundred years when you can have a beautiful old looking instrument now um, so I fully understand, uh, you know, that, that there's something magical about that kind of look. So we've um, we've created some really beautiful instruments that uh, that kind of emulate that. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm actually, the, the, the varnish is so thick in this area that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just feather it down, so I thin it out um, so that I don't have such a, such a strong ridge line between the, the old um, varnish and the retouching. Uh, so there's a fair bit of cover varnish on here, so I'm just working with that. From Dancer in the Dark 2000. So the first thing is I'll darken it a little bit. And then I will put just a uh, 
coat of varnish over the top and, and after that I'm going to have to treat it differently uh, with a different kind of retouching varnish. Um, fantastic. There's also I've noticed that the varnish here is very thin. So I'm just going to put a very thin coat of varnish over here just to protect that area because we don't want it to um, wear off. Okay. There we go. Might as well put a bit of varnish on the edges here where it's fully worn off because I can. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm I'm back. I'm going to do a little bit of the retouching just in here. Um, so I've got some color ready. I'm going to use my uh, use my magnifying glasses here and uh, just going to add a bit of color here. quite a dark color. Um, it's a bit like a very dark brown. Seems to be a bit of red in there. A fair bit of black. Just get some cover varnish at the top. All right, I'm gonna have to let that dry for a bit. Uh, so it's slowly getting there. It's a bit of a tricky one, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just put some clear varnish over it. I probably need to do a few more coats of clear varnish. Uh, might not show you that, uh, but uh, I'll definitely show you what it looks like when it's finished. Um, and then I can, uh, I just want to polish this area and then I want to start looking at fitting the neck. Okay, the exciting moment has come. Like I've I've spent a bit of time 
doing this. I did a lot of the retouching here, so it's looking a lot better underneath the fingerboard. And now the time has come to glue this neck in. So uh, I'm gonna work very, very fast here. So my glue is already, uh, my glue is already hot. So I am literally going to put the glue on this surface here. Put the glue on the other surface. I always like to put the glue on both surfaces because uh, makes it glue stronger, hold stronger, and then I push this together. I have already checked all the measurements beforehand just to make sure that uh, that the uh, the neck height is right and the string height is right and everything. So now. I just have to put the clamp on then I've got a second clamp that I'm going to put on from the other side in a second you'll see yeah, it's nice to have the instrument together again check the string height string projection is oh my god it's perfect and uh, neck is straight yeah okay yeah so the neck is in now it literally has to glue for um, for like I'm gonna let it glue for a 24 hour period and then uh, I'll keep working on it after that. Then it'll all be just finishing touches, getting the instrument nicely polished, putting on a new bridge and really getting the best sound out of the instrument. Very excited to get it finished soon. So this is the end of part one of this video. Um, it's quite a big repair. So I'm doing it, I'm going to do it in two parts. And uh, so make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you find out when I release the next part. But in the next video, I'm going to finish the instrument. I'm going to finish polishing it and you will hear it being played for the first time after the repair. Uh, look forward to seeing you. Keep making beautiful music and see you soon.